Hey guys. Hey. Happy Sunday. Happy Easter Sunday. That is it. Yes, it is <laughs> Easter Sunday. So excited for this day. Just two favorite holidays. Yeah, Easter's fun. It's, Easter it's just and Christmas. Amazing. So those are my two favorite holidays. Yeah, and hopefully you're just enjoying a fantastic day with your family. Family and friends, and yeah. it's just those that you love that you've been able to surround yourself with. So we're hoping you guys have that time together and just celebrating the, I love this part when they always say reason for the season. So what's the reason for the season, babe? That is the resurrection of our Savior, Jesus Christ. And so, yes, we are going to have a little bit of a spiritual bent today on both our thoughts and our feelings. And so hopefully you will enjoy the, uh, the journey with us today. It's just been an amazing day. We had a wonderful, wonderful morning at uh, church this morning the messages were sweet and the music was even sweeter and then we had a really really uh, sweet discussion with our kids as we had family breakfast so it was awesome talking about the resurrection and the seven days leading up to the crucifixion and resurrection of christ and so it was an amazing uh, time for us as a family so definitely and you know just want you to know that we love every single one of you guys that watch this with us and just I guess those that don't watch us too but um, <laughs> because you know what we're all in this world together and we all need to help one another so yep. this is us helping you at the moment with your Easter leftovers all right <laughs> and honestly this can be used for any leftovers virtually any leftovers the only leftovers I really don't think you want to put in there is probably into this um, leftover uh, meal it's probably soup and probably <laughs> not, not work. like salad. So probably what are not. we making? So I, I alluded to that in my post, which is Hot Pockets. So you guys know what Hot Pockets are. They actually are another version of like a calzone, another version of anything you want in bread, basically, in some kind of dough. And so what I want to tell you right now is we made this super easy. We make this with, um, we're making this with, look at this. Texas, oh no, Texas Roadhouse, oh my gosh. Rose Rolls makes um, wheat bread, frozen wheat bread. And um, I know this is also made with some white flour. So if you don't like that idea, you can also just make your own wheat bread dough. That's all you gotta do. But we're trying to show you the easy way out. Yep. So get some frozen rolls, frozen bread. And they've got a wheat one. Um, and if you, again, if you are um, wheat intolerant, gluten intolerant, you can get your own gluten-free, um, uh, let's see, baking mix, gluten-free baking mix of rolls and sandwich bread. You can do that. This one is made by Sunflower Mills. So you can make your own if you'd like, but we chose the easy way out, and that's why they're easy peasy. And I just like had this while we were at church. I had this defrosting, and look at that. Look how big that sucker got. Yeah, put this it in is, the sun, covered with saran wrap, and yeah, <laughs> I just put it on top, and then just like it, bleh, yeah, it's ballooned up. It's filling that whole thing. <laughs> so what we're gonna do is take a piece out of here, and he's gonna roll it out, and I'm gonna put the fixings. We're just gonna use gluten-free flour to um, use. Do you want to put some on the? Yeah, put here? some on the bottom. Okay, so we're just gonna roll this out. This is super super easy. We don't want to take a lot of your Sunday time, um, especially this Easter Sunday. And we just want to, to see what we're going to do. So I'm just doing a little ball about, I don't know, that big, about baseball size. Yeah. Is that a baseball size? Yeah, I'm going to throw a curveball at you. So, okay. <laughs> and he's going to, oh, you know what I need to grab? I need to grab some spoons. Okay. Sorry, babe. Oh, they're in the dishwasher. They're in the awesome. dishwasher. So I washed everything. So. All right, let me... Uh, just roll this out. So we're just probably gonna get like a, I don't know, not even an eight, mm, smaller than an eight by eight. I don't know, by the time I get six it done, it'll six. be, no, it'll be, so, you once know those, I get it rolled out. So here's the idea. The idea of all this is that, you know Hot Pockets that you buy at the store? I actually saw them just the other day, and I think for 10, you can get them for like 15 bucks, and I'm like, dang, that's a lot to me. Or that's something that you know that isn't going to be that great for you because it's all, you know, it's got a lot of preservatives and stuff. You can make your own bread dough. You make your own, I'm doing a sauce here. This is your own sauce, spaghetti sauce. 
and this is just some ham, but you can use whatever you want in it. We've got some veggies, roasted veggies that we're having for um, our Easter dinner, and then some cheese. Now you can use diet cheese, shredded cheese. You can use low, um, low moisture, uh, what is this? Gosh, I'm like mozzarella cheese or low skim. That's a skimmed mozzarella cheese, I was gonna say. There you and go. So that's pretty good. Yeah. You wanna make it more in a little bit of a rectangle. You wanna make it in a rectangle? More of right. a rectangle, just cause I really wanna make it a hot pocket. Okay. Okay. I tried, no, there this you is go. good, that's good. Okay. Perfect, so nice little rectangular. So while he's making me another one, I'm gonna actually put together just this stuff with the ham. And you can put whatever you want. So I'm only gonna do one side, which I screwed up already and did almost the whole thing. And I'm just gonna put some spaghetti sauce. You can make this out of your own whatever, tomatoes, tomato sauce. We've got some ham, put that inside, and some cheese. Can you guys see what I'm doing? I'm sorry, probably in there. Yeah, we can move that now. Yeah, probably can't see all that. Okay. Let's try this. And so then just put some cheese. And so this is how you make your own hot pocket. And guess what? All you gotta do is the next day, you can bake this now and then freeze them individually so that you can have them for um, you know your your kids' lunches or just like their snack after school snack, and you know what you're getting them and you're not having to spend so much money. I think this thing cost me three bucks, three or four bucks. Really? Yes. Wow, that's a deal. For all that, I believe so. If I can't remember correctly, yeah, I think so. Yeah, no, it did. Well, the thing is we're making it all out of leftovers, right? So you could be at the end of your day, grab all your leftovers and meal prep some snacks for your kids. Right, or for you, whatever. Or for but you. This is, this is perfect because you know they're always like, hey, I want, I want something quick and easy. And well, guess what? Yeah, Jessica especially wants it quick and easy and tasty. Yes, and this would be super, super tasty. All I did was fold up the ends, pinch the sides, I didn't use anything else. Now you can take some egg wash, that's just some um, egg, and brush the top of it, make it so it's nice and shiny. You can do Why that. Why would you do that? Just to make it kind of brown and make it nice and shiny. It makes it pretty. Oh. It looks I guess like I'm... we're probably gonna get, like we could get at least eight out of that one. I think we can get more. I think we'd get about, yeah, probably six is what I really? think. Really? Maybe eight. But Actually, you could probably even make that thinner, you know, if you want. Oh, yeah, to. I'm not done yet, so. But I'm just saying, like, you could get use less dough. Oh, sure, yeah. I'm thinking you can get eight out of one of those loaves. Yeah, probably. So that's I quite a that. deal. If you think about it, if I spend three bucks, of the, three bucks, and even if I got six or eight, let's see, that's like, Mm, I'm trying to do the pennies on that. Oh, <laughs> let me just think. Three dollars. If I get six out of them, that's one dollar, eight dollar, twenty cents, ten cents, fifteen cents. About fifteen cents a piece out of six. Okay. So that's it. Fifteen cents each, and I can get like twenty, uh, eighteen to twenty-four of them. Yeah. That's ten good. to fifteen cents. All right, there we go. Ready? Yeah. Put your in innards in. So, so what are we making now? So much cheaper than getting, um, yeah, you can keep going if you want to. We can make more. But um, I think this one, I'm going to put some sauce again. And then I'm going to put the veggies in this one. Now, you got to be careful with veggies because they get really watery. So what we did with these is this is roasted veggies. These aren't fresh. So that's what I would recommend you do is you cook them ahead of time so that they're not so water, so that the water is absorbed out of them and then evaporate out of them, and then you would add that to your hot pocket. So okay. this one is just veggies, and you don't have to put cheese if you don't want to. I will put cheese in this one. Um, you have to put anything. You don't want to put anything in it, because it's really yours, so you decide. Okay, and yeah, so I'll put cheese in that one. I probably should have made it a little bit further into the um, dough instead of on the edge but really that's all I'm doing and then I'm kind of sealing up the sides by rolling it up and then I'm going to place it in my already greased pan and you're going to cook it at 375 now are we going to throw our two in so we can taste yeah. them 400 yeah we should just do that yeah probably 400 degrees guys and oh, we actually have some roasted veggies in there Yep, and they're about ready to come out. Yeah, so let's go ahead and take those perfect. out. And I'm going to put this in. 
That's it. So again, if you want to make these ahead of time, freeze them, uh, bake them, and then freeze them. So there's two of them. And cook it for about 20 minutes. Just got it out there. Whoa! <laughs> hurry, hurry. There's the thing right there. I just dropped the pan. Oh my gosh, you're big. Here, here. That was hilarious. Did you guys see that? I just like dropped the pan, just went whoosh. This, this way, and went whoosh, bam! That's what happens sometimes, I swear. I'm like, oh, hurry. Save me. Okay. Usually I'm the one that makes a mistake in the kitchen. Oh gosh, I make so many. It doesn't matter. That's not a mistake, it's a learning thing. It's okay. That's okay. funny. Here, let me put those. In. So anyway, these are the roasted veggies that we've been making yep. for our Easter dinner, and those are what we threw into the hot pockets. So I'm gonna turn this up a bit. Okay. All right. So in those, you said 30 minutes. I think no, they'll I be. Oh, 20. Okay. I think they'll be done. Usually when I'm making pizza Five crust, 15. it'll be done in about 15 minutes. So turn 15. this up to. 425 or 400? Yeah, 400's fine. So, okay. yeah. So, yeah. and I'm going to keep doing doing this since I'm already rolling it. So, so well, we're going to. Yeah, let's visit. What are we going to talk about today? I don't know if I can actually multitask right now. I don't I like can. Call, It's called switch tasking, and I don't really want to switch task and make some more dough. So, will you go for it, babe? Okay, you talk, and I'll do this. What are we talking about? I don't know. What oh, are we yeah. talking about? It's so. Easter. It's Easter. So just the thoughts about um, our Savior and what he has done for us. And so one of the things I posted about was that he overcame all. So when I think about overcoming all or overcoming the world, well, what does that mean to you? Well, that <laughs> we don't have enough time to go. But in the short thing, one, he overcame death and two, he overcame our sins. And I think really what you what we, we were talking about before we were on camera earlier today was how do we deal with the unforeseen in life? You know, you do the best you can yeah. to plan and to build a life that is positive, that's helping others, that you're serving your children. And it seems like inevitably something happens in your life to derail your plans or your aspirations or your goals. And so how do you, how do you respond to those challenging situations in a positive way and let faith and hope drive you in a positive direction. So I, as we were discussing this, I kind of came to the conclusion, we've talked about this before in our podcast about not being tied to the outcome. And I think that really we shouldn't be tied to our own outcome and our own expectations but being tied to his expectations or his outcome, meaning that whatever happens, the Lord's got our back. The Lord's got our back. We've got so many things that we want to work on, we want to do, we, we expect to happen, we um, have aspirations and dreams and goals, and I think those are important, and they are important because it helps us in our progression in life. It helps us grow. It helps us develop. It helps, you know, we want to have those things. And I think that we should also have like certain, certain things that we're wanting to do and expecting to do, right? Because I don't think that, well, what am I trying to say? I don't want to go without thinking, well, I'm, you know, I, I just always will be hoping and never, never um, driven to that expectation or that. Driven to grow. Okay. So. I, I think that's an important thing. It's like, it's not a free ride and it's not that everything is exactly planned yeah. out for you in life. You have to do some effort, but then grasp on with everything for the, on his grace. So, and I think about, and I'm thinking about an experience that I have. I have a very close friend of mine and he's very open with this. He ended up uh, serving some time in prison. And uh, he, he told me, he's told me on multiple occasions, he said, Jody, I needed to go to prison because I needed that experience to change my inner being because I had been so selfish, I had been doing everything for me, 
And what prison did was, for me, it was God acting my life to create a new man. And I needed that. And I think a lot of times we get into situation and we're fighting against the situation instead of working towards a new goal, but recognizing that we need God's hand to help us become a new person, become who he's trying to help us become. If we will just let his hand and his guidance take us to where he knows he can take us. Well, and that's being tied to his outcome and not our own. Yeah. I think that we, um, we want, we definitely want the best for ourselves, for our kids, for, you know, people around us. We want the best. And sometimes that path, whether it's your choice or whether someone else's choice, sometimes that path is going to um, be a path they they chose. What do I say? There's a path that they've chosen, maybe, or that out of their control has happened, and that means the Lord's going to help and still guide you in another another way if you would let Him. So being tied to His outcome means allowing His grace, His salvation, His re, um, redemption, His resurrection, His atoning sacrifice to be part of your life and to accept it because he did he died and he rose for each one of us to save us yep and i and i like that you touched on both things in your control and out of your control or things that you caused and things that you didn't cause so like in the case of my friend he caused his situation through his choices and he allowed the lord to make a difference out of that because he was humble enough and was willing to allow him to act in his life. Then there's the other situations where we didn't expect it, we didn't control it, and you gave the example of somebody dying in a family or suffering a long and elongated period of being sick until they finally pass away. Yeah, and I was thinking about, oh, sorry. No, go ahead. Well, just my mom. My mom suffered from Alzheimer's, and I thought, this is a horrible disease. There's no cure. And it's like, why, why are you letting, you know, I'm looking at God going, why are you letting her suffer like this? Because hasn't she been a good woman? This is what I'm thinking. I mean, she was a great mom. Love her. She'd give everything to anybody. She had yes, she would. hardly, she had hardly anything. And yet she kept giving and giving and giving. And, and I'm just like, Lord, why? What, what's the point of this? What's the point of having her suffer this long? Okay, fine. She has the disease. Let's, let's end it now. We're good. You know, because there's many more, wor there's worse things than death, I promise you. And because death just means you're released, to me, you're released from your trials and your troubles. And you get to be living with God. So I'm good with that, right? I'm, <laughs> I'm happy with that. And, but really, the whole point, I believe, was something not only maybe for her to learn for herself after when, when she could still think about things, like having her rely on us and us, as in the ch her children, being um, um, giving towards her, serving her. And then the people around her could see this. And then just seeing God's hand and his work and the miracles that he was providing for us, it was just, it was amazing. There was a lot of time that um, we were able to spend with her. And I wouldn't, you know, as much as I didn't like the disease, I would never take back the time that the kids got to spend with her on that and joke with her and she'd forget a lot about that she'd give them money um, because she had Alzheimer's and then the kids would be like, oh yay, grandma's giving us more money. Like, but we joke about that now, right? And it's just, those memories are precious and I don't know what his hand, what the whole point of that, you know, um, disease was for her so much it may have been for us. And well, that's, I think that's a big thing. That's the beauty of it, right? Yeah. I mean, tied to his outcome because he knows what we need. Yeah, and I, and I think a lot of times we feel like, you know, why is this happening to somebody that I love? And when yeah. you step back, especially in the case of your mom, a lot of times I would step back and I would just be in awe of what was happening to the people that were serving her. The love and the caring and the gentleness and the patience that developed. I think about Rhonda and and the dedication and the love that she gave your mom those mm -hmm. you know those those many years and months and 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 just the gentleness that she developed you know and then when she came to our house and 
And uh, you know, the patience and the and the gentleness that we had to develop is, you yeah. know, as she would get lost in her prayers and start over and she'd be praying till two AM in the yeah, in the get, evening. She get lost in the store. <laughs> yeah, she'd get lost and, and Judy would go in, Mom, you've already you've already said your prayers. No, 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 come on, Mom, it's time to go to bed and be like, But we had to learn right? patience and yeah. be humbled <laughs> by the situation. It's it's just that that was a lot of learning for us. So really we don't know the whole plan of what Heavenly Father and our Savior Jesus Christ have for us, but if we trust in what they, that they are all knowing and knowing that they want the best for us, kind of like we want the best for our kids, then, then we're going to be okay. You know, would you let your own kid fall like to the depths of, you know, where they're not going to be able to learn? No, you might give them a chance to learn and let them struggle a little bit. You might let them stall the car as you're teaching them to drive a stick. <laughs> okay, you can go with so, that analogy. No, I just think no, it's explain. fun, you know. It's like, you know, the last couple of days I've been teaching Ashton how to drive a stick shift. And um, I've told them, of all the kids, he gets the award for the most stalled. <laughs> Right? I don't you know, even know other kids that we taught them stick with. Oh, and I taught Zane, I taught, okay. I've taught uh, Kaylani and uh, the other kids as well. But yeah, so today it's, it's interesting because, you know, I told them, I go, when you can handle the hill, you can take the car by yourself. So today was the day we took it up the hill. And it's not that big of a hill, but, it, you know, to allow him, you know, struggle with the foot pedals on both sides and try to keep the car from rolling back, but also have enough gas for it and then to have the car kind of lurch for it and then chirp and, you know, to have, you know, to be there side by side with him as he learns how to do that. And I think that's an important thing. You know, a lot of times we think that we're alone, but the man upstairs is always with us. And he's always there cheering us or coaching us. And then some, some days he actually opens the door for us. And we just need to be humble enough and submissive enough to recognize that he's actually there guiding us and feel, feel that love and continual guidance. Well, and so. I believe that he is definitely cheering us. But I believe always he's holding our hand. Yeah. I believe he's always holding our hand, even through any of the struggles. He's just there. He's holding our hand. Because don't we do that with our kids? We might, okay, maybe. Yeah, I don't know if he's holding the hand, but I do think. Well, I was that, thinking that, that's what I was thinking. It's like, when I think of holding hand, I guess I'm like, I'm there to support I'm you. I'm always there. I've got right? your back. I'm always there for you. Yeah, so. I'm not going to, I'm not going to let you fall to your depths. It's We're, like our kids, they always know they can come home. They always have a place. It's like, I have a saying, I didn't raise my kids, kids to nest. I raised you to fly, so go soar. But I'm here if you need to have a temporary resting place to nest for a bit and then go soar some more once you get your heels, your wounds healed and you're ready yeah. to readjust it and you're ready to go. So. Yeah, and that's what the Lord does for us, guys. So know that and just, you know, cherish that. And be, honestly, I think a lot of times it's, it's not that so much that we don't want his help. I think we just don't maybe feel what we're worthy of it. That has that, has that a lot probably to do has a lot it. to do with it, and that that uh, he's already overcome it, guys. He's overcome whatever weaknesses we have, so he understands. Yep. So embrace the love. So let me see. Oh, we've got three minutes. Let me see because he said it might be less. It might be less, but I I have a tendency to believe that it'll be right between thirteen to fifteen minutes based on on uh, making pizzas. So, but yeah, I hope you guys. We hope. Oh, he's woo. done. You think those are done? All right, bring them over. Let's take a look. Them, so they are nice and okay. So see. hold on, I'm gonna go grab um, a pan, a plate. A plate. Do you want me to bring those over? Or you're gonna serve them on a plate first. Yeah. Okay. So anyway, we hope you're having a fantastic. It's interesting because to me, every Easter has always like been very beautiful, and today it's kind of like windy and dark out, but. It's turned it's out beautiful, out. so it's like... Okay, let's move. Can you move that one? Okay, yes. So here's the thing, guys. Look at this. Now, I did not brush them. If I brushed them with an egg wash, they would be more brown. You would see more of a brown, you know, coat to them. And so I probably will do that with the others. But this is really cool. It's pretty. Yeah. I don't know which one's which. <laughs> I don't know. So... But these are going to be super hot. Yeah. You want to cut it with that? Yeah, maybe yeah, we should cut it with that. Hot. Yeah, oh yeah, they're hot. So 
take a look at that. I'm gonna open that up for Oh, you. look at the cheese just like look at that. Look at that super yummy okay, goodness. See the, oh, see the steam come off that sucker? Woo! That one is the ham one. Yeah. So shall we try that? Yeah. Or? Okay. Yeah, I just uh, don't know how to try this without like burning our mouths. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> well, I think that it's, was only like twelve minutes at. at yeah, 400. I probably yeah, and the dough is perfect. So yeah, you, the dough's done. You probably do it a little. If you wanted a crispier outer edge, maybe another three minutes. No, yes. that's what I was saying. This one actually is. So that if one, you can yeah. see that one's a little yes. bit more brown. That's what I was saying. If I had an egg wash on it, it yep. would have been yep. you know. But even with that, uh, like when I make calzones, oh, I never put an egg wash yeah. on them, and, and I it turns, them, out like and that. turns out like that. So do I want to open the the um, the uh, veggie one? Sure. Okay, so I'm gonna open the veggie one. Whew, sucker's hot. <laughs> okay. Oh, oh yum! Look at, Look at this, guys. <laughs> You know you want to come to our house for Easter. Yeah, that this looks is like, awesome. These are the leftover pockets. So yeah, so. This is going to be fun making the rest of them. All right. Oh, I can't I can't bite into this sucker. It's going to be hot. You go for it. Well, just blow it. Here, blow on it? Yeah. All right. Okay, let me do a veggie one. You know it's going to be good. I'm actually oh, yeah. gluten-free, so this is going to be... Yeah, um, so. This might actually... <laughs> be a little detrimental to my right. belly after a while. But we'll take a little bite. Okay. okay. Oh. It's Hands good. down. Yeah, it's really good. This is even better than... Yeah, these are really good. Make your own Hot Pockets, guys. Yeah. These are way better than the frozen ones you pop in the oven. Plus, they don't have any of the preservative garbage in them. Yeah. You just... Yeah. These are awesome. Oh yeah, you guys gotta try this. So. so this was our version, meaning that I didn't take a recipe. I just said, ah, oh, let's take some bread dough of frozen and just make it up. So it's a you good guys, idea. If you have um what was I gonna say? Um Recipes, a bread maybe? no, if oh. you had a red bread maker, you can just make the dough in the bread maker and make your own wheat dough. That's super easy. And then just use that. So all these things you idea. can do. It's not very hard, and then the time it takes you at the store to go buy it, you could just be making it too. So there you go. You know. So, anyways, all right, great option right here, guys. There you go. Hot Try it. Pocket. <laughs> Homemade hot pockets. Yep, they're awesome. So look at him; he's gonna eat more. Yeah, I'll eat this. <laughs> Thanks, guys. This is what you can do with your Easter leftovers or any leftovers you want to put in your little hot pocket. Go for it. That's right. Well, happy Easter, guys. Thanks for joining us. Happy Easter. Yeah, remember to like and share. And don't forget to join us on Choose Don't Excuse podcast every Thursday. You know we're going to talk about something fun. so Something interesting yeah. <laughs> that we've experienced. So, And yeah. maybe not. <laughs> It'll be something we We, we like to explore. <laughs> All right, so. guys. Have a wonderful Sunday. Enjoy. Happy Easter. Happy Easter. Peace out. See ya. These are awesome. Yeah. Let's finish up making them. Those turned out really good.